This is his rebellion against the rest of the little houses that are all painted exactly the same and are all fenced exactly the same. And here's Thunderdome. Here's just a one little speck of bright rebellion where we're saying, no, we're making a carnival and we're gonna have 30 guys fight in it. Perfect. This is one of my poems. Cones and rods, cones and rods. His eyes are bleeding from their cones and rods and no, he can't see by the dawn's early light cause there's a crack in his mask that he got in the fight and the gas passed through the glass on the right side and he collapsed as his comrades fought and died. But here lies not the end of this fictional struggle for when our hero comes to, he will search through the rubble, stock up on ammo and go looking for trouble with the government. An unrelenting corporate juggernaut hell bent on profit motives and determined to not stop. But these conspiracies our hero sees and will not tolerate. He will not stand down to a fascist state. He will not back down till the people create a better society. This is intoxicating fiction, but let's get back to sobriety. Not one of you pussies has such radical piety. I mean, you hipsters aren't exactly of the rioting variety like our hero. You killed exactly zero politicians, and I'm wishing it weren't the case, but I'm afraid Orwell was wrong about the proletariat race. There is no hope in the proles. There is no hope in the proles. The more I read, the more I see there is no hope in the proles. The more I read, the more I see what Aldous Huxley knows. Yeah, I know that he knows which way the wind blows as it carries the airwaves of shit TV shows. And you select which shit with your controls and there's a button marked power. But your finger won't go there. You just sit in your chair with that blank fucking stare and then you ask, where is the change? And I find it strange that this question is asked by a radical who idly sits on his ass watching campaign ads paid for by gas companies as they buy politicians with their dirty money and it's all plain to see and it's all happening right behind you. Because when you watch TV, they don't need tear gas to blind you. Cones and rods. Cones and rods. Your eyes are bleeding from their cones and rods. And as I look around this room, man, what do I see? It's a pair of bloody eyes staring back at me. It's our hero, and he's calling me a hypocrite. Says, if I want a revolution, then I should do it, because I talk a big game, but I ain't done shit to prove it. Yet. Cones and rods. Cones and rods. My eyes are bleeding from their cones and rods. It's funny because Rob was actually resistant at first. Rob didn't really see the point of playing with Nerf guns out here. Ryan was like, no, just take him. If, if you've got them up in St. Louis, just bring him down. We'll play some Nerf around the house. And that's how it started, you know? We started playing around the house. Eventually, we opened up the upstairs, you know? We opened up the back rooms. We started really expanding as much as we could. We turned off all the lights, and we put in the neon lights, and we had the pulsating lights, you know? And we had the music bumping, and it's a different experience at that point. Eventually, that just wasn't enough, and we had to claim the yard, you know? It just, it had to happen. We needed to expand. We had outgrown Rob's home, and we needed to take over his yard. That's what we did under the command of our Captain Rob, is we painted everything and we built up these structures. We built towers. We built drawbridges. This is, I mean, this is on a smaller scale, but we're talking about walking in the footsteps of empires here. This is what men have been doing all throughout history, is they've been, well, let's build some towers. Let's, let's put a drawbridge in, you know? That's, that's classic fort building. We're just, we're doing the same shit and fundamentally we're simulating a military battle you know and it's it's funny that rob was so into call of duty before he got into nerf because call of duty is simulating battle in a way that we can never do here because they have modern weapons they have modern tanks they have squads of guys going after each other in an urban setting and we're dealing with the backyard and nerf guns but when you're playing call of duty you're sitting in front of a screen fundamentally you're sitting in front of a screen you got your headset on, you've got your controller, maybe some sort of Mountain Dew that gives you gamer points sitting beside you. And out here, you're running around, you know? You're, you're moving, you're ducking behind cover, you're physically doing that. And it's, it's not an adequate portrayal of warfare, certainly, but it's a game that's trying to simulate that on some level. Mankind has been simulating combat since we've had combat. We've been simulating killing people 
since as long as there have been people to kill, you know? I'm sure that our ape ancestors, or, I mean, we're apes too, but our other ape ancestors were simulating combat before we could speak and walk, you know? There's theories that an infant getting tickled, the reason that they're ticklish is so that they'll start defending the core and just learn that from a very young age to defend the core. I mean, that's just an inborn, we like to fight, we like to have that experience. And nowadays people aren't willing to fight, you know? They're not willing to get bloody. And so I guess we just play with Nerf guns. But in, in a way, it's funny because we're simulating a much more lethal way, you know? We're simulating guns. I think that there is literally no chance that evolution has not selected for violent, aggressive behaviors in mankind. Now the flip side of that coin is that evolution has also selected for caring behaviors. It's also selected for people setting up big parties and inviting all their friends over and feeding them all and having that great group camaraderie atmosphere. And we're doing both here, you know? We're, we're simulating the violence. We're sitting there and we're shooting at each other, but then we're also getting together and eating pizza. And it's a big communal thing. And so I, I think that there's a give and a take, you know? All, all people are evil. All people are good. We're all saints and sinners, you know? We all have things that we don't want to tell anybody else because it's a deep, dark secret that we're ashamed of. We all have that. And we also have good things that we've done for people and never taken credit for. And never, never bothered to say, yes, I'm the person who did that because we did it for the sake of doing it. The one thing that breaks my heart more than anything else in the world is SETI. Because SETI is pointing their telescopes at the sky and recording, and waiting, and just hoping that we're gonna hear an alien civilization cry out in the night and tell us that yes, they're here too. They're having this experience. They are trying to spread life, and with it, truth and beauty throughout the universe. And SETI hasn't found that. All these years that they've been looking, they have not found any trace of alien life. And before that, we, we couldn't say, you know? But now, we're looking, and maybe we're looking in the wrong band. Maybe there's something way more advanced that we're not looking at. Or maybe we just haven't looked at enough specks in the night sky yet, because there's a lot that we have not, you know? That, that's a big sky. But so far, we haven't found anything. And the more that we find nothing, the more likely it is that life on Earth, in a way that breeds intelligent species that are thinking about these things, are rare. And the more rare they are, the more, I mean, it's not important because from, from my worldview, there isn't really importance. You know, there isn't, it's a, it's a human concept, but I care about it anyway, you know, and I think most people do. To me, it seems more important that we concert our efforts and that we try to not let terrible empires exploit little tiny nations and that we try to move together as a species to make this world better and then to spread to new worlds. What? What, what counts as the base? The tower? Okay. One shot kill? One shot kill. So, just kill them all, then grab what? the flag? Stop it! You fucking cheaters! <laughs> Nobody die! Everybody die. Everybody die, actually. That's the opposite. I didn't think so, but no, I didn't. Stay, stay in there, stay in man, like, honor system. I get your No, I can't. You gotta get the flag, Jess. Shoot straight, Corey, come on. No. Apologize a trillion times. Oh. On new people, there's a stampede in the middle. It's kind of a juggernaut weapon. If you get to it, you can use it as much as the ammo. All those clips up top are usable. Uh, I can show you how to load it if you need to. But basically, just pull the trigger and it'll keep firing 35 rounds. <laughs> hey, Steve. <laughs> That's how good I am. <laughs> Hey, you're on the bad team because I put this thing on the outside. No, no, no. So you can't see it coming. Just get you in the face. That might be. A, I might have been drinking. Maybe, maybe just a little.
I can see the screen. Oh, Jazz is sticking his ass out. Oh, Steve. Did I get you? Yeah. Now she got me first. Oh. Yeah. Good. Oh! God, that was new. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. I, I about did the same thing. I knew it happened a couple times. Oh, you're right there. Oh, you're right here. Oh, God damn it. No, no. <laughs> Oh, you got me. <laughs> Did I get you at all? <laughs>